Welcome back. In my last video of learning the RISC-V ISA series, I put together a data path of several register to register instructions that you see here, add, subtract, or an and. And in order to do that, I put together a logic table, truth table, that looked like this. And I went over uh, how to take the inputs from a RISC-V instruction and I talked about the outputs that needed to be created in order to be able to set the control signals appropriately to execute the instruction. And then using this truth table, I created control logic that, that figured out what kind of an instruction we were being given. Was it an add, a subtract, etc.? And then use logic gates to come up with the control signals that we could send to the ALU and to the register file in order to execute these instructions. But and this is and this is one technique that works well. It especially can work well if you use techniques to optimize these gates. There are special techniques that you could use that I really didn't cover in the last video, but this can get really messy if we're talking about, you know, 30 or 40, I think there's something like 30 or 40 instructions in the RISC 532i. Uh, ISA. So I wanted to use a technique uh, that makes this process a lot simpler. And so instead of using logic gates here, I want to use a ROM component. I'm going to delete all of these logic gates. I'm going to leave my inputs and outputs here because we're going to need those. Let's take a look at our truth table. So our truth table gives, shows us a series of inputs that need to be translated into a series of outputs. The inputs come from the instruction. The outputs go to or the control uh, signals on various components within our circuit. What this kind of looks like, if, you're, if you've done application development, is this kind of looks like maybe a hash table where you have some key value that's translated into another value, right? So you got a key here and a value here. Now, in theory, I suppose in hardware, you could actually implement a hash table. But uh, what, what you get for free in Logisim is you get a ROM component, uh, where, whereby this is actually an indexed input into the ROM, and then the ROM will spit out, if you give it this index, it will spit out this, you know, this output. Uh, from the last video, I took the liberty to alter this truth table a little bit where I created a binary column which concatenates all of these inputs together into a binary value and then converts them to hex. And we'll, we'll need this in a minute. Um, but for those of you who are curious um, how to do that with Google Sheets, you can, you can use a concatenate function and then a two text on each one of these fields to concatenate this together in a string. And then you can use bin to hex to convert this binary value into hex. And so I did that for all of these rows, both on the input and on the output. So let's go back to our control logic. So let's put in a ROM component. And we need to set up our ROM component with the uh, correct number of bits. So for the address bit width, we need to be able to address the ROM with the correct number of input bits. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine bits here. So our address bit width needs to be nine. Now in terms of data bits, the data bits on our output are one, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. So now what we need to do is we need to get these inputs identified from our truth table here into the address area of our ROM. And we need to get the data value routed to the ALU selector and the uh, register write enable control signals. We can actually now just implement control logic with this ROM, just like this. But what are the values that need to get filled into 
the ROM itself. Well, the values that need to get filled in are these output values. And they need to get filled in at these addresses. So for example, um, for the add instruction, we need at the address C to put in the value one. So at the address C, the value one. So the address C, uh, we're gonna click to edit the contents. So this is, so this is eight, nine, 10, or, or A, B, and C. So at the value C, we need hex one. What's the next one? So at one zero C, we need the value, the hex value 11. So at one zero C, so one zero, so this is eight, nine A, B, C. So this needs to be 11. Next, so at CC, we need D. At CC, CC, so this is 8, 9, A, B, C. We need the value, did I say D? My memory is so terrible. Yeah, the value D. And then EC, we need F. So EC, we need F. 8, 9, A, B, C. So we need the value F here. Now, you may be looking at this saying to yourself, wow, there's a bunch of wasted space. Yes, there is. That's one of the downsides of this technique. This ROM, if you were to synthesize this on a, on a real FPGA, this ROM would be, allocate, you know, would be allocated into the FPGA with these values, and there would be wasted space. And secondly, you know, a ROM has a, a timing associated with it from the time that you Spit, you give it an address the time the value appears on the output, uh, and that timing is probably slower than just using discrete logic gates, which will overall slow your design down and make it so that it may not be able to execute as quickly as it might otherwise would if you just used discrete logic gates. Another downside. Again, we're learning, so I don't care about those downsides, but just wanted to point out that uh, you know these these two techniques have their pluses and their minuses. So let's go back now to our data path and let's try out some of these instructions again. Let's simulate them. So let's go, let's go back to our register file. And uh, yeah, I'll use the same test that I did in the last video. So for register three, we got a five and we got a one and we're writing these values to register two. So let's go to the data path and let's do the add instruction. So I'm going to put the add instruction in here, uh, 0041833. And again, we already see on the output uh, 6, because 5 plus 1 is 6. We're doing the add instruction. So can we also now write this to x2? So we need to tick the clock. And then if we go look at our register file, we should see an X2, six. So again, the ROM seemed to give the right control signals for the add instruction. So let's go back and put in the value for the subtract. So that should be uh, 4041833. And again, uh, five minus one is four, so the output looks correct. Let's tick the clock. Go look at our register file, and we should see a four in X2, and we do. So far, so good, it seems to be working. So let's do an OR instruction. So 0041E133. And uh, one OR with five should yield five. That is correct. And so if we go look at the register file, oops, uh, we see a four, and that's because I did not tick the clock. So let me tick the clock, and we see a five. So the right occurred. All right, one more to check. Let's do the AND. So uh, if you AND the number one and the number five together, you should get a one because both uh, both values have a one in the ones place. 
So let's, and I'm talking the binary, one's binary place. So let's put the instruction in here, 041F1333. And I get a one on the output, which is correct. And if I take the clock, oops, and I go look at the register file, there should be a one in X2. I think it was uh, useful to demonstrate this technique, and I think you probably will agree that creating control circuitry, control logic, uh, is much easier to do with the ROM. And if you think about it, we could take a truth table such as this and maybe write some code that would actually produce a file that you could actually go into Logisim and load directly into this ROM without hand typing in. So the next video, that's what we'll do. Thanks for watching.